Today we're going to be painting the ceiling, but first we got to remove all these lights. There's like five of them in this kitchen. As soon as I go ahead and shut it off and you're not blinded anymore, you're going to see the ceiling is covered in stains. Absolutely everywhere. And it becomes more apparent, all the imperfections and everything. It needs a good paint job because it's a kitchen. Things splatter on it over the years. Just look at this light. See that big ugly ring around it? This wasn't always a recessed light. There was some big light fixture here, maybe even a fan, and it was removed, but it wasn't painted before the new lights were put in. So I just have to remove that trim. And those trims, those can be very tedious getting them back in because you got to stretch some springs. And my hands are pretty big. Sometimes I can't even fit them in there, so I won't even put them on the way they're supposed to go. I'll just stretch the spring through the... There's other holes they can go in, and it works out just fine. Right, I'm going to go ahead and remove this light bulb. You see up inside there? Oh, whoever put these in didn't do it the right way either. But that works out actually perfect. It's not going to hurt anybody. You see this right here? The spring is supposed to be stretched way up inside the housing to the correct hole, but they just have it connected to this lip of metal. Sometimes I'll put it through these holes I was talking about. It just makes it easier because these don't have to have a lot of pressure on them because it's holding this. It's like at the very most like half a pound worth of weight with this little metal ring. And even if it did fail, does it really matter if this piece of trim actually falls? There's no way it is, but I'm just saying, oh, look at that. Just the light bulb was blocking that, so that's dried blood. We're just gonna release it this way. Get the whole thing out of the ceiling. Oh, there's even more blood in there. Those can actually stay up there. It'll be easier if I just leave it. Yeah, look at all this damage here. They definitely didn't paint it. But I'm gonna go around with a brush, get that nicely inside to help hold the sheetrock together. This is what I was talking about. You see that really skinny hole right here in the center of the screen? That's actually where the clip right here is supposed to stick way up in there. People like me with big hands, that is just such a gigantic challenge. And I've, I've struggled in the past to do that with really long needle nose pliers. And I learned, and I've been told by other electricians, sometimes you don't even have to do that. Like, it's such a pain when you can't fit your hands in here. Some of us will just, see this here? Not using the hook. We'll go up a little ways, force it through like that, and then we'll stretch it down to the framing or the trim. Here's the thing people love about recessed lights. The actual cam structure inside the ceiling usually cost around six or eight dollars, but yet the trim, usually the cheapest you can get the trim is the same price. These metal trims that are on these, I'd say are at least 20 bucks a piece. So that's how the company makes their money, selling the trim to you, because the structure up here is like nothing. They're really cheap to bang out. Like this entire job here, Assuming these are put together with 14 gauge wire, I'd say this kitchen, hmm, including a light switch, boxes, there's um, probably under $200 in parts. But insulation of this would be more around three grand, I'd say. Well, that's what I'd charge for it. Yeah, electrical work is mostly labor when you think about it this way. And the great thing about these is, you see, they're not put in exactly straight. And you see the housing's not going to move because it's nailed into the studs on each side or the joists. But you see this? This entire structure in the middle moves. See the wing in here? It moves back and forth and you can even manipulate it with your hands to make it straight. So when you put the trim on, it doesn't matter that there's imperfections here. You can even stretch it down to the proper height of the ceiling. There's a lot of margins for error with stuff like that. And that makes them even easier to work with. 
All right, now I have no idea if I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this or not, but you see these cracks here? This building is 60 years old and these are original ceilings. Eventually things like that are gonna happen. Just look right here on the edge. See all that? Look at all this cracking. That's a problem. The guy who did the edging just wasn't very great. But you see other imperfections, these little cracks. You can see the joints of the sheetrock. There's actually a very easy way to cover that up. It goes over all these stains. It goes over everything with perfection. I have used Dry Lock Extreme on so many ceilings. Originally just because it was around, but it actually works awesome. If you have corners along the ceiling, like the tape starts peeling down because the guy who did it just didn't know what he was doing, you get a little of this behind it. It'll stick all that back up. It'll cover those cracks, make them invisible. Because dry lock is thick paint made for waterproofing a basement. And this is dry lock extreme, which means it puts up with mold and mildew. Perfect for above a stove where that stuff may form, or even a bathroom. Granted, I've only used this on popcorn ceilings, so any imperfections from it being a thick paint would not show up either. I know a lot of people hate popcorn ceilings. I like that style. It's all right. Now take a look at these rollers. This one, smooth to semi-smooth. Not great for a popcorn ceiling. You're gonna end up kind of pushing it as the roller doesn't want to move perfectly. Now this is the one that we're going to use. Semi-smooth to rough surfaces. This one works great for the ceiling. Now this one right here is actually more made for a popcorn ceiling, but I won't use it. This stuff, it fills with paint. It just makes a giant dripping mess. Just don't like that one. We're going to use this roller, and the reason is this one has got to sit in some paint thinner for a while. You see how it's all caked on here? Yes, I could slam this onto it, but it's not going to make a good seal on the end. You see, and it's going to get between this paint as it's sitting in the tray. If paint gets on the inside of this, as you're painting, it's randomly going to drip out of here and fall on you. You got to make a good seal on both of the ends, like this. Nice and tight. Now we'll get onto our pole, which this one is extendable up to 10 feet. All right, the ceiling's done drying, and it's as simple as this the way I'm gonna put them back because my hands won't fit up top. So put it through the little hole, and now the spring without using the actual hook. Yep, just like that. Now, I'm gonna put the light bulb back in. And now we gotta eyeball it from down below. Move it around till it get it perfectly straight. Alright, we're all set. Turn the lights back on. 